Hi guys, I'm Jonathan with Farmer's Friend. Today we're gonna to show you how to install our Dutch door end wall. So let's start with showing you the tools that you're gonna need for this assembly. You'll need a step ladder, some string, a permanent marker pen, a square, some kind of clamp that can open up to at least two inches, scissors or a knife, a hammer, ground post driver if you have one or you purchase one, or you can also use a block of wood. You'll need a tape measure, two pairs of pliers, a 5 16 driver bit, preferably on an impact driver, a half inch socket, a 3 8 of an inch drill bit, a level, preferably a four foot level, but if you don't have one, a smaller one will work, a circular saw or a miter saw if you have one available. If you have neither one of those, a metal hacksaw will work as well. The next step would be to verify in the manual that you have all the components that you need, and then we're ready to start assembling. If you're installing this kit on an existing tunnel, the first step is gonna to be to remove the plastic from the spring wire channel so that the end wall plastic can go in first and then the roof plastic go on top. The first step is to plumb the bow. So we need to take about 12 feet of string and this is to make our plumb bob. Then we'll tie a string from the left side of the tunnel to the right side across the face of the end bow. I'm now gonna take that section of string that we cut off and we're gonna make our plumb bob. So we're gonna take the string and run it through the end of this end wall bracket that comes with your kit and then tie it off loosely. Now we're gonna go up the ladder and tie the plumb bob at the center of the bow right at the peak. Again, you want the string to be right up against the face of the bow and the metal bracket at the bottom should be just above the string that you've already stretched across between the bows. This step is one of the most important steps because if your bow is not perfectly plumb, the door will not function as it should. It'll tend to swing open or swing closed or you'll just have issues with it being square. So the goal here is to get this plumb bob to hang directly above the string. You don't want it to be out like this or you don't want it to be out behind the string. So you want it to be directly above, which in this case ours is. If it was not the case, if it was swinging out front here, then you would need to try to lean the bow back. If it was swinging behind the string, then you need to try to lean the bow forward. And the way that you're gonna do that is you'll have to loosen up the center purlin at the top of the bow, and then you can raise or lower your wind bracing in order to get that bow to move in and out. So if the bow was leaning forward, you would wanna raise that wind bracing up and it would pull it back. You don't wanna do that on both sides. Um, if it's leaning back, then if you lower the wind bracing, it's gonna push it out. Now, you can run into a problem with your purlin because um, if your bow is leaning in and you're at the end of your purlin, you don't really have enough extra length to lean the bow back out. And so then what you'll have to do in that case is actually to lift the, the bow off the rebar um, and undo this end and then move your rebar back a few inches and replace the bow. Also, if the bow is really crooked and you see that one, at one of these joints you have a bend, you may have to remove the tech screw from that joint and try to straighten it out and then replace the tech screw in a new location. Uh, but this is, like I say, really important and you want to take your time to get this plumb um, and that, that plumb bob directly above the string so that you don't have any problems in the future. Now that the bow is plumb, we can go ahead and remove the plumb bob so it's out of our way. The next step is to measure the distance between your bow and you're gonna divide that by two to get the center line. So ours is 172. So now we're gonna mark the string at 86 inches. Now we need to measure 24 and 7 eighths inches out from that center line mark on either side. So now we'll go to the other side and do the same thing. We're now gonna drive the anchor post directly behind the string centered on that mark that we just made. So you can use a piece of wood or the ground post driver you want to get it to where it's not pushing the string out, but you want it right on the edge of the string. So we recommend leaving about four inches above the ground. You just want to make sure that this swedge part is for sure above the ground. The lower you go, the closer the bottom of your door is going to be to the ground, but you also uh, risk having issues with swinging the door open and having to clear ground. So 
right about there is just perfect. Now we'll go to the other side and do the same thing. If you feel like your posts moved off the line at all, we've been able to straighten them out by just hitting the ground really hard on one side of the post. If it moved a lot, you can also take a rock and sort of pound it in right next to the post and that'll often shift it over a little bit. So you can just tweak them a little bit like that. Now that we have the anchor posts finished, we can go ahead and remove the string. The next step is to assemble the base bars. So we have one piece that has the bracket welded onto the end and another just square tube. Align the, uh, the letter A's, slide it in, and then we're gonna use a tech screw to secure that joint. We recommend tech screwing on, the, on two sides. Just be sure to install the tech screws on the same sides of the pipes that we've already pre-installed. Now we can assemble the second base bar. Again, put align both the A's and slide it together. If you have trouble with any of these joints sliding them together, um, you may have to use a file on the inside of the tube. If they're too difficult, you can tap them in with the hammer. Because aluminum is a really soft and kind of gummy material, it can be a little bit more difficult to tech screw. So what we found is you may have to back the screw out as you're maybe halfway through and then it'll go in really easily. The next step is to assemble the door posts. So we'll start with the hinge side and you're gonna match up the letters C. Again, if you have trouble sliding them together, you can use a file to clean out the inside of the tube. The last step is to assemble the latch side door post. Line up the B's. You may have to tap the post, but looks like that went through pretty good. And that completes the assembly of all the components. Now we're gonna take the hinge side door post, which is the one with the hinge tabs welded to it, and we're gonna slide it over the anchor post. And it's gonna be in this position where the tabs are kind of facing out and to the left. Now we're gonna level the hinge side door post and mark on the end of the bow on each side of the post. And that helps us to know where the brace band should go for the bracket. Now we're gonna install the end wall bracket. And the first step is gonna to be to bend your brace bands so that they can slide over the bow. And then since we also had wire lock channel on the end of the bow, we had to remove some of the tech screws so that you can slide this up underneath. So we slide the brace band on and then squeeze it back together, insert the end wall bracket, and then use the carriage bolt and nut. Be sure to put the carriage bolt in from the front of the tunnel so that the end is not sticking out where it can puncture the plastic. Hold the door post right on the marks that you made and then slide the tube strap with the end wall bracket up until the edge of the bracket is right in line with the right edge of the door post. And we're gonna mark just below this bend in the bracket, which is gonna be our cut where we attach the door post to the end wall bracket. So now you're gonna remove that door post and cut the top part off from your mark. So for this, we're gonna use a circular saw. Soft metals like aluminum and copper can actually be cut with a regular saw. But if you don't have one available, you can use a miter saw, like a chop saw, or a metal hacksaw. Now we're gonna put the hinge door post back on top of the anchor post. And now that it's cut, we can attach the end wall bracket to the post. But first, we wanna double check to make sure it's plumb. And you may have to adjust the bracket up or down, right there, it's perfect. So you take a tech screw and install it through the holes in this bracket. Before we tighten the brace band at the top, put the level on the front of the door post because you can twist this bracket in and out and actually adjust it quite a bit. So you wanna to try to get this as close to level as you can. So we're having to twist ours out a little bit. Now that you have that tightened down, go ahead and 
check with the level again. So my front is good, but it shifted a little bit to the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that again and slide it up a little bit. Now we're just gonna repeat the same steps for the second door post. Now we're gonna install the header. You just line up the two Ds and you may have to twist this a little bit to get it to slide on. And then we're gonna put one tech screw through the top. Now that we got the header on, there's quite a bit of a gap here. So we put the level on the door post again and I see that this one's actually leaning out. So we're gonna have to go up there and loosen the brace band and slide it back in until it's tight up against this. So now we just need to square this header up you can use your clamp to hold it in position. So we're gonna start by just installing one tech screw on the back side of this bracket. We're gonna go ahead and remove the clamp and now we're ready to install the door panels. Now we're gonna install the lower door panel and the two panels are interchangeable so you don't have to try to figure out which one goes on the bottom. So the first step is to install the hinge pin, put the longer side of the pin facing down now we're gonna install the lower panel. So you slide it down over the pin that we installed at the bottom. You may have to jiggle it a little bit to get the alignment just right. And then slide the center pin in, again with the longer side of the pin facing down. Should line up and go right in. Now to install the upper panel, you slide it down over the center pin, and then you drop this pin down through the top. Our next step is to attach the door panels with the hitch pin. So you slide that between and now they swing as one unit. Now that we have the door panels in, we can see that the header has a bit too much of a gap on this side as compared to that side. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that one tech screw that we installed earlier. And with that removed, we can now adjust the header down until the gap is consistent all the way across the top and then just go ahead and use your clamp to hold it in position and we'll go ahead and re-tech screw it. So now that we have the gap at the header just right, we're gonna go ahead and install a couple more tech screws on this bracket. We'll also put one above the header on the inside here. The next step is to attach the door stop. It gets screwed into the lower door panel. So position it about half an inch or so below the uh, square tubing and then you can utilize your clamp to hold it in position while we start the first tech screw on the other end. Next step is to install the base bars. Bend the tube strap so we can get it around the bow and then you'll have to squeeze it back together. Now install one of the end wall brackets with the carriage bolt Again, facing from the outside end of the tunnel towards the inside so that the plastic doesn't tear on the bolt. Now we need to figure out where to cut the base bar. And so we need to bring this end wall bracket up. The base bar, you need to push it up against the door post. And then you're gonna mark right where this twist is in the bracket. And that's gonna be where we're gonna cut it. So put the base bar where the angle bracket is right at the bottom of the door post and then go ahead and use your clamp to clamp that in position. Now that we have that clamped, it's gonna be really easy to position this end wall bracket and to tech screw it to the base bar. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and tighten up the brace band. Now we're gonna tech screw the base bar to the door post and we're gonna put two on this side, one at the top and bottom, and then two from the back side. Now some of these are gonna be difficult because we're going through two thicknesses of aluminum and then also into the anchor post. So um, you may have to back the screw out a couple times to get it to go all the way through. Now we'll just repeat that process on the right side. The next step is to attach the door latch pin and you need to attach it over to the left far enough to where the end of the pin almost comes to the edge, the outside edge of the door post. So the next step is to attach the latch to the door post. 
So we're gonna center it in the door post, side to side, and then up and down, you need to make sure that the latch pin comes back straight, directly centered into the V shape of the latch. Once you have it in that position, just hold it and put the tech screws in. Now we have to drill a hole for the little cable to go through the doorpost for opening from the inside. So what you need to do is open the latch all the way up and then just put a, a mark on the doorpost right about where that hole is in the latch. That way our hole will line up with where the cable comes up. Now we're gonna use a 3 8 of an inch drill bit and drill right in the center of the doorpost in line with that mark that you just made. The next step is to install the handle. So we're gonna use two tech screws to install it on the upper door panel. The next step is to go ahead and install the spring wire channel. We covered up the hole in the door post. Now we need to go with our drill bit from the backside and drill through the channel. Now if you pinch the wire, it'll feed through pretty easily and you just need to come get it to come out the back side of the door post. And there's your latch so you can open the door from the inside. Now that we have the spring wire channel installed, I just wanted to point out a couple things. The bottom, uh, the base bars are really easy, just come straight across and straight up to the latch. And then on the top side of the latch, you just pick it up again and go straight all the way up to the top. Um, so you just, you just have to cut out where the latch is and then you come straight across the header and you have to leave a little bit of a gap here where this hinge tab is. And then you go straight down the hinge post and then straight across the bottom bar. The last step with the spring wire channel is to tighten the stuff on the top where we had to take it off to install the end wall brackets and the tube straps here. The next step is to install the plastic. So I'm gonna lay it out here in the grass and make sure I get the right side facing in. This is a 14 foot tunnel, so the plastic is a little bit wider than I need. So I don't have to be super precise about this, but I'm gonna get myself right in the center and then I'm gonna bunch the plastic up and go ahead and bring it into position. The first step is to get the plastic up over the peak, put a little bit of wire lock in here just to hold it in position. I'm sure we'll have to come back and adjust this, but it just holds it in place. And then we'll go and try to go ahead and pull the corners up around. And because of the wind, I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to anchor just a little bit right there. We can look at these creases across here and we wanna to try to get that level. So I'm gonna put it right about that height. Go ahead and put a little bit of wire in this channel. And then I'm gonna go back up to the top and I need to pull a little slack up right about there. I'm just gonna keep working my way down trying to get the creases out as we go. All right, now we'll start here at the end of the other piece and work our way down the left side. At this point, I'm not trying to focus on getting it too tight because when we go and put the wire in on the edges of the doors, that's gonna pull in quite a bit of slack. So we actually don't want to get it too tight right now. Now that I've gone most of the way down on both sides, I'm gonna go ahead and start working down on the door posts. You can see how as we start to work our way down these, it's gonna start pulling plastic in from the sides. I need to go ahead and cut a little bit of a relief around the latch here. Don't cut too much, because you wanna to try to keep the plastic as tight around the latch as you can. And we're gonna go do the same thing down the other side. Okay, my last step is to go across the top of the header. Now I'm gonna cut the plastic off the bottom and, and trim out the door. I'm gonna leave about six inches down at the bottom just as sort of a flap. And then from there, we're gonna go straight up and around the door. The next step is to trim off the excess plastic on the backside, and then we have to reattach the roof plastic into this channel. So now I'm just gonna go around and trim the extra plastic, just make it look real pretty. So one of the cool things about our Dutch door end wall is the ability to open the top half independently of the bottom half. So the last step in the process is to install the tie back cleat and cable. Find the end of the wire closest to where, it, where the door intersects with your bow here, which for me is right here. Pull the, the end of that out of the channel, take it back to this point right here. 
take the small end of the cable tie and run it over the wire back to the point where the door intersects with the bow and then put the wire back into the channel. Now you want to figure out the ideal location for your cleat to go in a position where you can still get the cable off and yet it won't just pop off real easily. So I'm going to go ahead and tech screw the cleat on in that location. Now the cable tie should be able to loop over that cleat and keep the door in an open position. That completes the assembly of the Farmer's Friend Dutch Door End Wall. This kit is compatible with the classic and gothic style tunnels in 14 and 16 foot widths. We hope this will be an awesome addition to your farm, and if you have any questions, visit farmersfriend.com or give us a call.